Hello and welcome to the SRA's SRT Practitioners Clearing. I'm your host, Bill G. I am the current president of the Board of Directors for the Spiritual Response Association. And we do this every other week. This is a, um, a, a recurring thing. Um, and we would absolutely love it if you would be one of our subscribers. Uh, we have, um, right now we have over 600 subscribers. We want to get that up to a, at least a thousand subscribers. And once you subscribe, please hit the little bell icon uh, that's down below. And that will inform you whenever we upload a new video. So that way, uh, in case you missed the live cast, we would be happy to have you do that. Um, today's guest is Maria Zeiss. Uh, she is our, uh, one of our long standing uh, SRT teachers. Uh, and she's going to be giving a program today, which is kind of an introduction to a uh, continuing education class that she's going to be offering late in, later on in August. And uh, so it promises to be very interesting. And um, oh, and one last thing, if you, um, if you like what you see here and you would like to support what we do here at the Spiritual Response Association, we would absolutely love it if you would donate. And so if you could just contact us at www.spiritualresponse.org slash donate and give a tax deductible donation to our organization. We would greatly appreciate it. And now I turn the mic over to Maria and here we go. Hello everyone and welcome. Hello everyone and welcome. Thank you Bill for having me in this meeting today. It's a great honor to be here. And I want to uh, take the opportunity to congratulate SRA for this fantastic initiative. I think it's a great idea to bring the SRT community closer. Um, I have been part of the SRT family since 2004 when I first took the class. And since then I had made this system part of my life. I'm currently a SRT and SPR uh, practitioner and I'm a teacher of that basic and advanced class. If you need more information about me, you can find it in the SRA waste page. So today I'm going to uh, introduce a little bit of um, the class that I'm teaching in August, as um, Bill just mentioned. Um, that's part of the continuing education program. The class is called Opening and Clearing the Power of Your Family Tree. Uh, this class is organized by the SRA and it's already full. So I'm very excited about this class. Uh, we are going to have the English and English and have also the Spanish one. We have to have two classes. Uh, if you like the introduction, if you like what you uh, see here, um, please keep in touch. We are going to have, one of the plan is having another class before the year ends. So do not um, get lost. <laughs> okay, so um, just a it, uh, telling you a little bit about how I create this or how I come up with this idea. When I first started having this clearing since I took my basic class, I focus and concentrate only in clearing my family. Everything was related with clearing my family. I felt that I was born in the wrong place, in the wrong family. I um, felt that my family was completely dysfunctional and I was desperate to clear, to heal, to get answer, to fix. That was my motivation in the beginning. Of course, years after, after that, I just realized that was my ego trying to fix it because you actually doesn't need to fix anything. And we, uh, this class is, part, is teaching you that, accepting the family that you are because it has a purpose. So, um, when I start doing this clearing and a lot of questions comes to me, I decide to get information for other disciplines, other modalities. Uh, I read a lot. I get trained in another, another modality like a psychogeneology, uh, traditional medical astrology, uh, family constellation. I read a lot uh, of the, from the book that uh, Alejandro Jodorowsky uh, had um, published. Uh, I read about Hellinger. Anyway, I just trying to, I was like avid to get information about, I wanted to understand the uh, family as an institution. I wanted to understand 
the dynamic between the member of the family. So I just read a lot and took classes and so on. At the same time, I was gathering information, little piece of information here, little piece of information there, and I started including those concepts in on my own clearings to see the results. And then uh, to my client's clearing, and then organically become a class. Um, I decide to teach this class I decide to uh, give the others the information that was part of my journey because I like teaching. I think I like, uh, I think that's the best way, the best gift that you can give to somebody else is teach them something, give them some skills and tools for their own uh, growing, right? And uh, especially uh, teach people to take their own responsibility for their own healing and not relying on somebody else. Okay, so I'm going to explain a little bit how the class will go. Um, opening and clearing the power of your family tree is a way of understanding how the family tree is compound. The family tree is compound from the mother's side with all the ancestors, uh, which we call actually the family. That's the, the name of the family side, of the mother's side. It's called family. And that is um, uh, designed to preserve the um, the connection in between the members, they preserve the members close and they nurture them, okay? And we have the other side of the family tree, which is the um, father side with all the ancestors. And the purpose uh, is to give and provide material um, support, right? Uh, um, providers for one side. And the other side is the, fam the, the, the father side is designed also to help to preserve the lineage, to preserve the name. So uh, the surviving of the whole family, the whole tree, okay? So having this purpose on the uh, family tree, the family tree is always will be balanced in self, right? Always is balanced, it's, it's growing, it's alive. Right? But beside of that purpose, each one of the members of the family had their own purpose. So here when the problems start, because in some point, and we, we can see it, that the soul of the family, the family tree has a purpose of growing and um, expanding. At the same time, each one of the individuals in the family tree had their own purpose. So you can see the conflicts that start coming. So the, the members feel trapped inside of this a uh, big, a bigger um, purpose of the family tree. And why the member feels so trapped? Why they cannot, you know, align with this uh, um, uh, purpose group to improve themselves? Because we have invisible loyalties. These invisible loyalties, we can call it also vows, right? And that is because we have as a member of the family of the clan, we have the tendency to complete what our ancestor did not in the past. I mean, we, we wanted to fix unfinished business. We wanted to complete all the work that they had been doing in the past from the mother and father's side ancestors. And instead of having our own purpose and growing from there, we just, look back and see if there is something unfinished business for my father or for my mother's side, I can fix it and complete the work. That's our not job. Our job is to grow in the family and, but um, be able to have the, well, our own voice, having our own path, okay? So um, localizing those invisible, uh, inv invisible loyalties, we can put order in the family tree, right? And that concept fascinated me. So I start taking the concept and the, uh, as I said before, I taken the, the information here and there to create this class. And so I made some um, charts and uh, introduced kind of concepts so the student can go in, go deep, and uh, clear everything that is holding back from having uh, order in their own family and also be able to uh, express themselves, be able to do what they come to do, okay? 
So that's one part of the class. The other part of the class, and we are going to also investigate the pre-programming that had been created because of that. So there's some pre-programming that we already have in place that really limit, limit us to, um, to have a better future. Uh, we have the tendency to uh, acting as a ghost. Uh, we think that we have willpower, but we don't have willpower. We are the tendency to, to live as a ghost from the projection, from the both sides, the ancestor and the lineage, okay? So that's the idea, clearing the, the opening, clearing and uh, integrate the family tree, and also clearing and investigate what are the pre-programming so we can just for good clear it and be more present and have a better future. In other words, if we are happy, we bring, we bring uh, happiness to the plan and to the family. Uh, so the cleaning that we do by your, ourselves is not just but, uh, to us, it's also to the family and the clan as well. Okay, that's a, a brief introduction of what the class will be. So how we're going to do that? What are the elements we are using in order to learn uh, everything that I have said before. Well, we are going to keep using SRT charts, right? The, from the basic and advanced class. Uh, I, uh, I introduced, as I said before, new charts, extra charts that I have developed that help us to go deep to find out the agreements, the courts, the loyalties, the uh, lock boxes, everything that is, uh, is hidden right in the family tree and um also we are going to do some clearings and replacement um uh, statements we're going to use that also we are going to use affirmations uh symbolic act when it's needed and meditations so with the all these elements we will be able to uh not just open the the, the family uh, and clear the family but to get to the point that we can reprogram our conscious mind. Because sometimes, and most of the time, when you clear the subconscious mind, I mean, it's completely clear that it's excuses for us to have the same behavior, but what happens is the mind is our, in autopilot. The mind is mechanical. And that's what the pattern repeating cell and repeating cell and repeating cell, if, and even though we don't want to repeat, we just do it right so this combination of affirmation symbolic art meditation and clearance will help us to definitely reprogram our conscious mind to have a better future okay so today i i uh, bring um to have this exercise for you uh, this uh, meditation that this one is one of the meditation that i use in the class uh, I really like this one because it's connected with your physical body. And we know, we know by now that uh, our physical body uh, is like a map. We have all the information is there, all the information in there, in the organs, in the DNA, uh, uh, it is already there. What the only thing that we need to do is to learn how to navigate in the physical body to get information that what our conscious is get difficult to get our mind is really limited uh, in comparison with the information that is already in the body okay so we are going to do this meditation if you allow me and i would love you to participate um, if you if uh, for the um, srt practitioner we're going to do a little bit of exercise at the end of the meditation just to do a little bit of fun on it, right? But for now, let's do the meditation, everybody. Um, please um, try to sit comfortable, uh, having your feet on the ground, please. Just let's try to do this um, meditation. So just, just sit comfortable in your seat and trying to feel the feet in the ground. Please do not cross your legs and just close your eyes. I'm going to ask you, please take, take a deep breath in and breathe out slowly. Let the tension in your body release. 
placing the heaviness of your upper body on the hips and just relax and let it go. Take another deep breath and release all the air, feeling more and more relaxed. Trying to collect in yourself and noticing the vibration in your body. Maybe some tingling in some areas. But if you don't feel anything, that's okay too. Again, take another deep breath in and release the air slowly, feeling more and more relaxed. Now I want you to pick one situation or challenging that you are currently facing in your life. Doesn't matter how big or small it is. Just pick one. And that this, this moment nothing will come to you, that's okay too. Just let it go and follow my voice. So having that specific challenge in, in your mind, please ask the spirit to show you how you will be if you were becoming a tree. If you were a tree, how you will be. Let the patient come to you and observe how your physical body become one, become a tree. Observe the transformation in your body, in your physical body. The roots growing, the top, the branches and leaves. Can you see any flowers or fruit on it? Let your creativity to be expressed freely. Without judging, observe if there is some part of the, the tree is missing. Maybe the left side or the right side. Some twigs or branches. Observe the shape of the tree. Is it round or long? Is small or big? You can see color on it, or it's just black and white. Whatever comes to you is perfect, is right. There is no right or wrong impressions. This is your tree and nobody else's. You stay with a, a few seconds to feel your tree feel that your body had become one. And acknowledge that the tree that you had become is the representation of your family in your physical body. And each part of it has a meaning. Each part of the family, each part of the tree has a meaning connected with the physical body. 
And this tree is always in movement, it's growing, it's alive. Now, we will find out what part of your body or your tree might hold the cause or the, or the root of that challenging. The challenging that you set up in the beginning of the meditation. We will find out if there is part of the body that can tell us where it is, what is the root of it. And for that, I'm going to take you through your body and ask to please pay attention to any sensation that you might have in the areas that I will be mentioning. One kind of sensation, sensation like pain, heaviness, numbness, even vibration can be also the sensation of warm or cold feeling. Can be intense or mild or not at all. That's okay. Do not force anything. Just let the image come to you. Now put your attention on the toes, feet, legs and see if it's something come to you calves knees tights and hips and observe without judging the sensation of any kind that might be there This part of the body, this part of the body represents your siblings. So if you felt any sensation, try to keep it in your memory. Save the sensation in your memory. Now put your attention on the belly button solar plexus, pelvis area, abdomen, low back, and reproductive organs. Without judging, just observing what kind of sensation you feel, what kind of sensation comes to you. This part of the body represents your parents. So if you feel something, just save it in your memory. Now put your attention on the heart, heart chakra, chest, upper back. And observe the sensation that come to you, the feeling that come to you. And if you don't feel anything, that's okay too. That's an information also. But this part of the body represents your grandparents. Save the sensation in your memory.
Now put your attention in your arms, forearms, elbows, hands, fingers, and both sides of your body, left and right. And without judging, just observe the sensation of any kind. This part of the body represents your present life. So if something comes to you, please save it in your memory. And finally, put your attention in the neck, front and back, head, face, scalp. And observe the sensation of any kind, any feeling you might have. This part of the body represents your grand-grandparents. So save whatever you got, save it in your memory. Now, what, are, what part of your body had felt the most intense sensation? It might be one, one, more than one, actually. You're just trying to scan your physical body and pick one of your area that had been the most intense sensation. or the one that got your attention. And holding the sensation and putting the attention in that area, I want you to repeat this following statements silently. Holding the sensation in the attention in the area, please repeat after me silently. Yes, I recognize you as an important part of my life. I can see you. I know you and I honor you now. Yes, I recognize you as an important part of my life. I can see you. I know you and I honor you now. Please, I ask you to help me, to guide me. You have my trust. I need your help. Please, I ask you to help me, to guide me. You have my trust and I need your help.
Thank you for being in my life. For the legacy and learning coming from you. Today and free you for my loyalties. For any loyalties you have hold toward me. Today and free myself for any loyalty I have hold toward you. You are the past. Now is my time, here and now. Thank you for being in my life, for the legacy and learning coming from you. Today I'm freeing you from my loyalties. For any loyalty you might have hold toward me. Today and frame myself for any loyalty I have hold toward you. You represent and you are the past. Now it is my time, here and now. Yes, please, thank you. Yes, please, thank you. Hold the sensation in the area for a few seconds, repeating to yourself, yes, please, thank you. Now, breathe in and breathe out slowly. Coming back. See that the tree had disappeared of your body. Slowly breathe in and breathe out. And when you are ready, you can open your eyes. Well, I hope you enjoy the meditation and uh, you get something out of that. This is one of the meditation that I do for the class. There are many and um, we approach different things. Um, so for the SRT practitioner, um, if you already have the prep to work for this meeting, you can actually right now, as a spirit, in a chart of numbers, as a spirit, what percentage the challenges had been cleared with this meditation, the specific challenges that you had in your mind. And you are welcome to share it. <laughs> and ask question and answer. I'm here to answer any question. Okay. Thank you. Thank you so much. That was very, very nice. Wow. Okay. So we'll we'll open it up for questions in the chat. Um, so I'd like to um, get started here. Um, just uh, Wow, it's still the head's still spinning from that. That that was excellent. Thank you. Beautiful meditation. You're welcome. You're welcome. I'm glad you enjoyed it. Um, I'm I'm curious though. Um, uh, you you mentioned that you uh, studied um, psychogenealogy. I have never heard of that before. 
Yeah. Uh, so just a, a quick, um, you know, one sentence, whatever. What, what is psychogenealogy? <laughs> yeah, it's a, it's a modality that put together the part of the psyche mm -hmm. and the part of the genealogy, you know, the body co connected with the um, family tree. So it's how, how that family tree affect your psyche, affect your psychology. So, and the main, main uh, purpose of that is looking for the loyalties. Uh, so you learn how to look for the loyalties to do a lot of exercise and meditation. And um, it's a fantastic one. I, 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 had the, the, I took the class here in San Diego from um, Jameson Thompson. Okay. He's, uh, he lives in, in, in Uruguay, uh, but he's American, so he teaches in Spanish and Portuguese and, uh, and um, English. Nice. And actually, he's coming next year. He was going to come this year, but couldn't. So mm -hmm. he's coming next year. So people who are interested in taking the class. Awesome. Awesome. Uh, we have a question from the audience. Uh, what do the feet and legs represent if you have no siblings? Uh, the lack of siblings. The lack of siblings. Oh, okay. Interesting. So, so it's very interesting. So people who are, doesn't have any siblings or no members playing the role of siblings and you have some kind of discomfort is because you need the support of your sibling that they are not there. Uh -huh. so, um, so that would be something you would obviously clear. And then um, uh, would you then ask Spirit to kind of provide you with that kind of person in your life um provide uh sorry provide a provide a uh, someone to play that sibling role for you uh not necessarily what you do in that case is you acknowledge that the lack of siblings is related with the conflict or the challenges that you had just said uh -huh. right so uh let's see that i have a situation with work Mm -hmm. And then uh, when I do the meditation, that's that part of the, the, the part of my, the body that is bothering me. Oh, uh, it's lack of siblings, lack of having support in my whole family tree to approach problems better because you feel alone, you feel by yourself, there is no help from other siblings. Mm -hmm. So you clear that and acknowledge, clear and accept that because you actually doesn't need any siblings. Oh, okay. So you make peace of it with that. Excellent, okay. okay. Oh, we're a little bit of feedback. Um, okay, uh, somebody asked about um, ears, or specifically the left ear lobe. Yeah, it's, it's, it's part of the, I didn't mention it, uh, but it's part of the grand-grandparents. Mm -hmm. The left one is related with the mother's side, feminine energy. Ah. So it might be something that if you have that uh, sensation in the left ear, you might have a loyalty connected with your grandmother, meaning you are doing a job that she even didn't finish, unfinished business, or uh, for example, she might have some problem, physical problem with the left side, just for mention something. And then you might have it as well to be loyal to them because you don't want them to suffer. Basically, that is it. Right. Of this. All right. So we have another question about the back or spine. Like, the, like if you have pain in the entire spine, I imagine, uh, not just centered on spe specific chakra locations. Yeah. The back is related with your past. Ah. You know, I, I try to do the, the, the meditation shorter because yeah. the time is not enough, but the back is related with the past. So if you're having a problem there, uh, there is something in your, in your life that part of your past is holding, mm -hmm. holding there, right? And uh, that's what you have to focus. So just the same thing, just ask the percentage, clear it, and acknowledge and do meditation to be more present uh, in the here and now. Okay, excellent, excellent. Okay. Um, when I did the, uh, the meditation, um, I was specifically feeling it in my, uh, my upper back. <laughs> and, you know, then, then you mentioned that was, 
like grandparents of grandparents yeah. of the past and yeah. which which makes sense because all, all, all of my grandparents have passed and so they yeah. would be in the past <laughs> yeah. yeah yeah but also the past in your life you might be repeating things that to your loyalty to your grandparents and mm -hmm. why this is very interesting why the, the grandpa is located here right because it's pure love really Ah. that their love comes from the grandparents so somebody has grandparents to raise them or be close to it they are a blessing mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. more than the parent actually <laughs> oh interesting yeah <laughs> the well, parent, yeah. they survive and the parent is put the play the, the role there to survive to preserve mm -hmm. the clan and the family right okay someone's asking about the hands yeah, the hands is all is uh, um, everything. All the sides, including the hands and the arms, are your present. Mm -hmm. So it might be something the conflict is related with your present life. Might be have some information from the past or another member of the family, but the, the sensation is more in the hands. Is something that you you are not you are doing or you are not doing with your hands in your present moment mm -hmm. actions actions in the present mm -hmm. well yes yes because you're you that's yeah your, you, that's your you creation create that's your creation yeah. correct you create that with your hands yeah awesome awesome well okay well i i think that's it for our questions and that's fine uh because we're just about out of time uh thank you thank you so so much it was fun i hope so, everyone enjoyed it <laughs> oh, oh okay we oh, we've got another question here a right shoulder just just to finish it off with a right shoulder okay. So the shoulder is also part of your present. Mm -hmm. And it's because in the right is connected with the father. Ah. The masculine energy. So how you how you what is the masculine energy? What is the father? Is the one that that actually actually is the one that is the is the um provide, is the provider right. in the family. So it's, it might be related with something like that. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, all right. Okay, well, we'll do this one last question. You're getting lots of questions. This is great. Um, yes. The sacral. The sacral is part of the um, part of the uh, parents area. I see. All the reproduction area, the sexual area, the pelvis, the sacral is the part of the parents. So the conflict or the challenge might be connected with one of them. Mm -hmm. It could be a good idea to find out with the spirit which one it is. Might be both, but the percentage, you'll find out the percentage so you can um, get more information out of that. Okay. All right. Again, thank you. Cannot thank you enough for this. This is a, wa this is a wonderful meditation and wonderful, wonderful information. This is something completely new. I, I, this is something that I wouldn't have even thought of uh, going into. So this is really, really good stuff. Yeah, um, you're welcome. It was really nice to be here. Awesome, awesome. Uh, just a quick reminder to everyone that uh, we uh, we will be back in two weeks, and in two weeks we are we've already got our next guest lined up. Uh, it's going to be Malabika Shaw, um, and um, and uh, that's it. And so I'm uh, so thank you everybody for joining us. Thank you everybody in YouTube land. Uh, again, if you enjoyed what you saw here, just hit the subscribe button, and that way you can be reminded about new classes as they as they come up uh like i said we do this every other week and uh we'll just keep on going as long as we've got teachers and we've got plenty of teachers <laughs> all right thank you so much and you have a wonderful wonderful evening